Peace. The warriors are far from the reservation. But we're carrying no arms. Cheyenne signed a treaty. It says you can't leave the reservation without permission. No guns, no bows and arrows. To the north, there have been many ranches burned, people murdered. We search for those who have done this. To the south, we trade with our brothers. In peace, we return to our farms and women at Sand Creek. Next time, obey the treaty. You're going to be disappointed not to have somebody to shoot at. Yeah. Come in. Lieutenant Hewitt is here, sir. Oh, send him right in. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Welcome back, Hewitt. Thank you, Captain. Uh, what'd you find? Sir, we ran across a band of Cheyennes off the reservation. Yes? But not the renegades we're looking for. How do you know? They came from the south. They were unarmed, not a rifle in the whole outfit. You mean you saw no rifles, but they were illegally off the reservation. They were returning to Sand Creek. Said they'd been on a trading mission. They said. Have the bugler sound assembly. Yes, sir. What are you going to do? Teach them a lesson they won't forget. Double the ammunition ration. We're marching on Sand Creek. Yes, sir. You can't do that. Don't forget yourself, Lieutenant. Dismissed. You know what will happen if you attack a friendly tribe? My job here is to preserve treaties and make these beggars keep the peace. I said you're dismissed. Look, Colonel, every other tribe, the Arapahoes, the Paiutes, the Comanches, will use this as an excuse to join with the Cheyennes on the warpath. Not with me here to stop them. And south of here? South? Texas, sir. You know the South stripped itself clean of manpower for the Confederate Army. Lieutenant, do I have to tell you there's a civil war? We're fighting the South. If putting Indians on the warpath helps to win that fight, I have no objection. We're not fighting a war against women and children. There's not 10 men left every 1,000 square miles in Texas. Your being from Texas wouldn't have any bearing on your attitude, would it, Lieutenant? A man fights for what he thinks is right, no matter where he's from. You're being insubordinate, Lieutenant. And you're wearing the wrong color uniform. One of us is sure dressed wrong, Colonel. Lieutenant Hewitt, you're under arrest and confined to quarters until I return. Yeah, you certainly fixed yourself up good, didn't you? Did you hear what he said? Yeah, I got ears. Well, remember it. Weber? Yes, sir? I want you to see that this gets to General Firewell. What do you mean? What are you going to do? Somebody's got to warn those settlers. Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. You know what's going to happen if you leave this fort. I'll worry about that when the time comes. But you're just being plain crazy.
Hey, mister. Ain't you misread your compass needle south for north? This is the Texas border. I know where I am. Have you had any Indian trouble around here? This far south? If you don't mind, I'd like to get a canteen of water and a little food. Well, what for? Do you ask every customer the same question? Only if we figure it's a northern soldier trying to sneak into Texas as a spy. Well, I am from Texas. In that uniform? Better hold him. after guns and ammunition. Don't go to sleep, because they'll be back. Here. Where are you going, mister? You still aiming to hold me? Yeah. Till you get them things you were after. Thanks. It's all clear, Sarah. Better get the doctor for Harry. Another thing, I better get you something to cover up that uniform. You get where you're going. Try this. I have got a lot of people to talk to. Sure, it'd be nice to get close enough to talk to them before they start shooting. Folks is sensitive to that color around here. Say, just exactly what are you? I guess you could say I'm a deserter. From which side? Both, I suppose. I'll get you that food and water. You'd gone for good. So did I. But you couldn't stay away. No, Stella, I couldn't. In fact, I deserted to get here. Well, you're a little late. I'm married. Did you think you were the only man in the world? Now, wait a minute. Wait? Was I supposed to wait forever, Mr. Hewitt? Well, let me tell you, just one week after you left, I got married. To a good man, too. Ed Latham. That's his kid brother, Bax. Stella, you're making a mistake. Two weeks ago, there was a massacre of Cheyennes at Sand Creek. My regiment did it. Now the Indians are on their way. Indians? You made that up fast. Get off my land. Stella, wait! Your best chance is at the mission. Damn Yankee! Get her there, Bax. Damn Yankee! Hello, Miss Hannah. Don't you recognize me, Miss Hannah? I'm Frank Hewitt. I don't recognize no traitors. Look, the Comanches are on their way here. I came to you because I figure you're the strongest woman of them all. If you think you can scare southern women off their land so you can take over and claim it for your own, you're stupid. I don't want anything except to help. You'd better listen to me, Miss Hannah. Listen? Young man, I've already listened to three husbands in my time, and maybe I'll listen to three more before I'm done. Now, you listen. Our men folk are all fighting your kind, and we don't want what you call your help, and I call your lies. 
You'd better get going before you need some patches on them blue britches. What's your name? Ann Martin. You Jeff Martin's girl? Where's your pa? He's dead at Shiloh, and you'd be dead too if he taught me how to shoot good. Look, I'm not here to do you any harm. The Indians are on the warpath. I want you to get your things and get to the mission as fast as you can. Do you understand? I'm sorry about your pa. Now you start running. Oh, put that down, Ann. Your father and I were friends. Now get! All right. If you're pig-headed enough to stay here and get yourself slaughtered, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Keep moving, Yankee. I was a horse's hindsight for ever coming here in the first place. You get! Colt, I guess I didn't talk very clear the last time. Nor did I. Well, maybe this will help. Dora Hartley. The way I found her. The way the Comanches left her. You got an ugly way of telling things, Mr. Hewitt. You wouldn't listen to me. It had to be shown. There are things to be done. Let's get at it. Merciful Father, who has been pleased to take unto thyself the soul of this, thy servant, Dora Hartley, grant unto us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, who have served thee with constancy, that we may join thy blessed saints hereafter in glory everlasting. Now all my money's gone. Now all my money spent and gone You pass by my door A singer, a song Now all my money spent and gone Good afternoon. How'd you do? la dee da I thought all the real men were away fighting. Are you ladies from around here? Most certainly not. I'm Mrs. Charlotte Ogden of the Charleston Ogdens. And the first thing that I wish to make clear is that I'm not with this, this... Uh, creature? Thank you. 
Our driver deserted two days ago to go and find a new freight wagon when this one broke down. Buy them on Rocky Flats and thought I'd better bring them here. You did right. Now, put a wheel on this vehicle, young man, and we too shall be on our way. I'm afraid that won't be possible. We're expecting Indians. Indians? Men Indians? You might as well light. Oh! Oh! Indian! Where's my rifle? Where? Get out! Get out! Get out over there! <laughs> you should have seen yourself. <laughs> you too, yellow lady. Stand easy, son. What's the matter? Didn't you take a joke? Not when it isn't funny, Kettle. All right. I just thought you should hear the sound of the only Indian within a hundred miles. Or maybe you really believe that tall tale of yours, huh? If Dora Hartley could speak from the grave, she'd tell you. Her killing was done by a stray full of whiskey. What if you're wrong? Well, if he's right, I say that we should run out of here so fast that the wind would knock over the trees. It's too late. Time it took you ladies to make up your minds gave the Comanches time to close off the valley. Two days ago, even yesterday, could have been different. We're asking about today and tomorrow. I say we stay here, all of us. How many of you ladies know how to shoot? You can put your hand up. I can shoot good, damn Yankee. Mr. Hewitt, only the good book tells me what is right to do. I don't believe in shooting and killing. Miss Cora, the Comanches won't be reading the good book through their rifle sights. Miss Hannah, I appoint you sergeant and second in command. Pick yourself a couple of corporals. I'll take Ann Martin and Stella Latham. Good. Now get those horses unhitched and put them in the corral. Get your belongings inside the mission. Well, now, I sure wish you troopers a lot of luck, because you're sure going to need it. Going somewhere, Kettle? Maybe you do need a man around here. At least when you're sure is on your side. At least I chose a side. All right, let's get to work. You heard the man. Oh, Amy, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, Mary. Yeah. All right, men, use your muscles. Turn it over. In there. Push. Push. All right, Lieutenant. All right. Ready, men? One, two, three, heave! Any three men, Lieutenant? Any three men? Yeah, well, target practice. Good. Hold it, hold it. Get your head down so you can see that front sight. That's it. That's fine, Eddie. You all right? I don't think you'll ever hit it with that cannon, but to sure as blaze it, scare him to death. If I remember correctly, you don't need much practice. I'll take my gun back if you don't mind. Better than any three men, Lieutenant. Any three men. Most any three men. Hurry up! Hurry up! Prepare to move out, Sergeant. Skirt! Hop! Tuck him in. Tuck him in. Ready? Charge! Look, you 
were supposed to be doing a skirmish, not dancing a polka. Eccles, get down. You're just asking for a bullet in the back of your lap, and it's a hard place to tie a bandage. Do it again. And this time, I want you to hit that ground so hard it splits wide open. Oh. Say, General, this ain't the kind of work I'm accustomed to. You sure you can't think of some more pleasing arrangement for the both of us? Fall in! On the double! You got to brace your feet. Brace your feet, girls. Next! Hold it! Hold it! That's not the way I showed you. Get over there, Martin. You've got to use the momentum. All right, fast. You see? We've been working all day long. We've been working all day long. We've been working all day long. Pass me the water, darling. Pass the bucket down the line. Pass If, like you say, the Indians don't attack at night, why couldn't we bring the water in there? Well, they'll be needing water. We don't want them to have it. Pass me the water, darling. We've been working all day long. We've been working. No wonder we're not slaves. You've no right to work us to death, Haley, my smelling salts. Get back in line and keep that water moving. How dare you talk to me like that? Move! Oh. Oh. You better rest for a while. Oh. Sit here. You'll be all right. Just a little touch of sun. Emmett, you've got to help me. Look, let's not start that again, huh? I can't stand it any longer. Sometimes I think I'm losing my mind. You haven't told the others yet, have you? No, but do you think it'll take them long to guess? Oh, Emmett, please marry me. Look, I... I told you I'm not ready for marriage yet. Better get inside or back behind the wall. Behind the wall, men! Behind the wall! Come on, get down. Get down! <laughs> To work. Throw all these pieces down the hole. It's about ready. Martin, there's an old saying that an army travels on his stomach. I'm glad we're not going anywhere. Put some more salt in. Don't waste that lead. It scares. Don't reload any of these with the rough edges. What's wrong with your petticoat, Ogden? We need bandages. I had Hetty give up first. Take it off. What? Take it off right now. How dare you! You take it off or I'll take it off for you. Hetty? If you were in South Carolina, sir, you'd be horsewhipped. Let me introduce a lady, Lordy Da, Lordy Da, a lady with a very pompous air, Lordy Da. She can't see you pass her by, cause her nose is in the sky. Her boots are fancy leather in her bonnet there. We needed the petticoat. La da. Hi, Estelle. Can I talk to you? Sure. What do you really think our chances are? Indians is hard to tell. And what this can be. Frank, I told you I got married a week after you went away. Ask me why. You said Ed Latham's a good man. He is. Ask me if I love him. 
That's not a fit question. I guess I married him out of hurt and spite. I don't blame you for that. I went crazy wild at what you'd done. Forget it. Before you say something, you'll be sorry for later. I'm so glad I can say it at last. Frank, in my heart, I've never been wife to Ed. When I saw you come riding in, it was like a dam bursting inside me. Let all my feelings loose. Hey, Stella! Stella! What is it, Bax? Sergeant Hannah needs you. I'll be there in a minute. She wants you right away. I made that up to make her go. Now, mister. Be careful where you're pointing that gun. I know where I'm pointing it. At a no-good Yankee. Trouble we're in, don't you think we ought to forget about the war, Bax? When my brother went away, he told me to look after his wife. I bet you've been doing a good job, too. We were just talking about it. Out here? Like that? Hey, Bax, can you keep a man's secret? Depends. You're a good brother, Bax, but you got things a little mixed up. You see, I already have a girl. Which one of them is she? You will find out. Which one? Well... There she is now. Bax, come back here. Hello. Hello, Bax. And Martin. That's right. She's nice. Yeah. Now, you remember, it's a secret. Sure. Now it's time you got to bed. Good night. Put that gun away. What makes him so sure them Indians are between us and safety, huh? And that it's too late to make a run. Dora Hartley was pretty good proof. All right, even if he was right, why aren't we better off trying to fight our way the 200 miles than sitting around here waiting to be slaughtered like a bunch of sheep? Well, that's something to think about. Look, we can make it easy if we travel light. Load everyone in a couple of wagons, hitch the extra horses on behind, then when the first teams give out, we change over. Simple? I did was an account of Hewitt. He drove off all the horses. Did you? Yes. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because he was afraid some of us would slip away and tell where he was hiding. I don't believe it. It's partly true. Last night I heard Kettle trying to talk you into running away. It sounded like he might decide to do it. So you made up our minds for us. Somebody had to. 
Even if it might wipe us all out without giving us the right to decide for ourselves. Right, Danny, right. But you notice, he kept one horse here for his own getaway. That was for scouting, nothing else. Oh, sure. A likely story. <laughs> Fine thing, when you gotta believe a no-good turncoat. Just a minute! Right or wrong about the horses, Frank put himself in the same boat with the rest of us. What do we do with that varmint? Well, I came up till the fighting starts. All right. Get going. Frank, look! I'm afraid it's your place, Stella. We can hope they head north. We'll be ready just the same. Right. Back to your post, man. Move along. Move along. Gentry. All clear, Lieutenant. Keep your eyes open. What you're trying to do for us now is one thing. But it doesn't make up for the bad you did before. What bad was that? You ran out on Texas in the South. How could you do that? I don't have to live with people, but I do have to live with my conscience. And your conscience tells you to turn traitor against your friends and neighbors, I suppose. You think your way, and I'll think mine. Got all the guns clean, Lieutenant. Fine, Bax. Say, I'm sure glad you two didn't bust up. Bax? Bust up? Oh, don't worry. I've kept the secret about you being this girl. Bax, you better go see if the horse is all right. You told him I was your girl? Yeah, I, I had to. Why? Oh, he saw me talking to Stella, and he jumped to a conclusion. Stella Latham. I'm glad I found out about that, too. Oh, Ann. Here's your water and candle. Oh, wait, Mary, wait, please. Whatever happens, Mary, I, I wanted you to know that I was wrong. So wrong. No, I was wrong. Right. I guess maybe you were to have anything to do with a person like me. I should never oh, believe listen you. Listen to me, please, Mary, listen. Do you remember before the war, the monthly square dances? The men were so thick around you, a fellow couldn't get closer than ten feet without having his toes crushed. Then the war came along, and all the men in the valley left except me. And I guess I... I forgot how lucky I am. What suddenly makes you remember? We've been here, waiting to die. We deserve to die. I do, Mary, I do, but not you and the... Oh, darling, we've got something to live for now. Marriage? Yes. Oh, no one here can. Well, I know, darling, I know, but that horse, that horse will carry us to where there is one who can. Win it. Could we? Yes, darling. Oh, my darling, I, I love you so much. Darling, unlock the door. Hurry, darling. Hurry. Connor and Gibbons, time for guard duty. Your daughter ought to be in bed. Come on, honey. I wonder what it's like to have a kid of your own. No way to find out. Made and settle down. Me? Oh. New country, new life, why not? <laughs> why not? I knew a shoemaker once who became a violinist. Yeah. It's a good girl. <laughs> Tried to stop him, but she couldn't. We'll take her. Oh, no. No. Help me, Cora. He lied for her. One question. Why did you keep the horse here? 
Might have been able to lead the Indians away before they spotted the place. They'd have caught you. Maybe. Three more. Well, come on, make it fast. These mornings are terribly dry. Look, I, I'm no bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are. And we lost the other one that way. Tortilla missed. Maybe sometimes. Thank you. Hey. Amigo, how much money you got? None. I haven't got any. <laughs> He's pretty low. What are you going to do? <laughs> Come over here. What are you gonna do to me? What? Leave me alone! Put your arms up! Shut up! Look, I've got nothing. All I want to do is get out of here. I can't. We find out. Leave me alone, will you? Yeah. Get them up. Please, a heavy one. Leave me alone! Now. There. Now tell me, how much money you got? None, I, I told you, none. Oh, amigo, I must shoot you for lying. I'm not lying, I'm not. I <laughs> oh, look, my pockets are empty, search. Well, that's what I have to shoot you for not having no money. <laughs> no. Yeah. Look, look, will you tell your boys to stop this just joke and cut me down out of here? I wish I could, my friend, but we're in somewhat of a dilemma. If you're lying, he has to shoot you, and if you have no money, he has to. Now, what's it going to be? Look, um, supposing I, supposing I was to tell you where there was gold. Gold? Huh? Where's that? Oh, c cut me down. He said where? The, the old mission, 12 hours west of here. Oh, boy, why would you tell us, not keep it yourself? Well, I couldn't. I couldn't. You see, there's a bunch of women there, afraid of an Indian attack. They held me prisoner. But I escaped, and they got jewels and gold there. We mean? Supposing there is no gold. There is. They're still the women. And also Indians. <laughs> oh, what are you scared of? So long as we're locked up in this valley, we might as well enjoy it. Yes, unless Amigo lies and there is no women. I'm not lying, I'm not. Well, then we come back to him and complain. <laughs> what is to keep Amigo here? I'll wait, I'll wait. Look, I, I want my share of the gold, too. That's fair enough. Huh? Are you sure? I'm sure you're not lying. No. About the gold? No. Or the women, hmm? No, I... no. Well, then, I'm afraid I really must, old boy. Oh, no. No, please! Well, after all, it's not good to have too many people know about a hoard of gold or women. <laughs> Well, I hope his horse is good. Mine's a bit lame.
Not if they're close. Kiss? We'll get to yours. <laughs> Not Indians. Maybe we've got ourselves some help. They're white men. We'll open the door. Well, welcome, men. Mm. You heard what the lady said, boys. Looks like we come to the right place at the right time. Yeah. Correct. You're just in time for a little Indian attack. Huh? Indians? That's a nasty word, lady. Don't oh, Josh. It's no joke, gentlemen. Glad you're here. We can sure use three more guns. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> hey, where'd you get that horse? Hmm? Where's Kettle? Oh, he signed us in his place. That's right, amigo. <laughs> he said that you need help here pretty bad. Huh? Three for one, that's not such a Friend, we're only interested in two things. One of them's gold. Now, where's it at? What are you talking about? <laughs> now get. These are women. Get going, Buster. Frank! You better take him inside. All right, everybody, back to your post. We gonna let them women get away with that? Then that'll be a different story. Look! One of you talk English? Me. Medicine man, tell you, your people were friends. Gee, amigos, amigos, my name is Tortilla. I never had a fly. No, 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 it was not a fly. We're poor men. We have no gold. Honest. Gee, honest. But we know where there is gold and jewels. It's big like a mountain. Gold only good for white man. No, amigo, maybe you interested in white women who brought the gold and the jewels? Ah, uh, Chihuahua. Beautiful, everyone. And a pony soldier, Shivington. Shivington's man. Shivington. Where? Well, the medicine man is in many of his words. Yes, no? Where? There, back there. The mission. You lie. No, amigo. To prove to you that we are honest, we will stay here and wait for you, see? After all, we are entitled to a chair of the gold, no? You honest, you come with us. All right. Back to your post. No, no, wait. You gotta take a gamble. Get everybody on the roof. Roof? What do you mean? Come on, move. Come back. Hurry up.
And no one's to move or talk. One call can make the difference as to whether we stay alive or not. People. Well, they gotta be there. We seen them, didn't we? Yeah. All the way. I stay. The Lord is my strength, my rock. to be. They, they, they were all around. We were talking to them right here. That's right, Chief. They couldn't have just flew away. Oh. Chief, I know it. <laughs> I prayed there would be no killing. You didn't do those three any good. All right, let's get below. We sure fooled them, didn't we? Frank, what have I done? Could have happened to anyone, Max. Get to your post. Max, look after the children. Get over there. That's an order. You will obey if I have to drag you over there. for the medicine man to tell them the signs are in their favor. <laughs> Hold your fire, McCaslin. They're out of range. Just want us to get scared and use up ammunition. Mother of Moses, you can't get any scareder than I am right now. This is it. Let him come in to the center of the yard before you shoot. And don't waste any bullets. Thank <laughs> you. 
doesn't matter. It does matter. I can get those outposts in. Why weren't you firing that piece? Lieutenant, the Lord was plain enough in his commands about violence and bloodshed. Seems to me he also said something about an eye for an eye. You're on the other side! We can't stay here! Get below! See if you can get some fire in there. Is she dead? She was guilty. She was stained with the mark of sinners. Shut up! Come on, get her below, quick. out there, Gibbons. Put her over there. Ah! Talk to me, Mama. Mama. Oh, Mama. Mama. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. I, I want to stay here by Mama, please. I know, baby. I know, but it's going to be all right. Oh, you come please. with me. I know, baby. You come with Lucy, huh? I'll take good care of you. I promise. You know, everything's going to be all right, honey. Some things the army doesn't teach, aren't there? Lucy, uh, I wish to apologize for the bad things I said about you and the worst things I thought about you. Forget it. I... Thank you. How many casualties? Two dead. Quite a few nicks. It could have been worse. What happens now? We wait until the medicine man says a few prayers to decide when to attack again. How will we know? There won't be any secret.
quit it. We need all the rest we can get. Those drums are driving me crazy. Frank! Frank, they're sneaking up on us! Hold it! Hold it! That's no attack. They're coming to claim they're dead. Sergeant Lacey, as soon as they moved away, send a detail and bury those three renegades. Right. I'm sorry. You did right. How are you holding up, McCaslin? Just tired. I, I know this may sound strange after the way I acted, but when you're liable to be sleeping for a long while, you try to crowd in as much living as you can in what time is left. You're a good soldier. We'll get some rest. Thanks. Frank, I want you to know whatever happens, I've learned one thing out of it. Life is meant for only one thing. Every minute of it. To love and to be loved. That's all that counts. Stella, listen. Please. And if we live through this, I'm going to tell my husband that what never really started between him and me is never going to start. And then I'm going home to Joplin and wait. Jones, take over here. We're going on guard at 3 o'clock. You better get some sleep. Stop treating me like a child. I treat you all the same. Except Stella Latham. That's crazy. No. You can fool a young boy like Bax. You can stoop to use a lie about me to fool Listen, him. Listen, if you don't want to be treated like a child, don't act like one. Scared, Anne? We all are, you know. It's not that. Oh? What then? The love bug bite you? No. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Oh, to be young and not know the source of your trouble. He's a Yankee. Yes, and he's a liar, too. Here now. If you love him, you help him. He's got nothing but troubles. Men, gather around a minute. I want to talk to you. He ought to be back in the army. Always shouting, shouting orders. His shouting doesn't fool me. Why, he's worrying himself sick for all of us. Trying not to show it. That's why he's shouting. Now, good soldiers are entitled to the truth. We can stay here till they burn us out, or we can carry the fight to them. You're leaving the decision up to us? Why, Lieutenant? You don't tell us how to nurse babies, so we don't tell you how to fight Comanches. That's right. What's the matter? What happened? Him. Him? Oh, that medicine man. I got so dang mad at him, praying to his God about killing some more of us, that I just loaded up old Betsy with five times the regular... Ah, oh, look at her. Five times? Hell, he's more than a mile away. He is? His guns are only good for 300 yards at best. They always keep their medicine men well out of range. Ah, uh, guess I figured I'd prove my God was more powerful than his. Well, uh, I guess I was just hoping for a miracle. <laughs> Huh? Let's go outside and see if we can fix up one. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh. Let's go. Sure you can hit these things? We'll hit them. Don't forget the rest of what I told you. Because from now on, it's up to you. I'm staying here. You trying to get yourself killed? Obey orders. All right, men. Back to the fort. That's enough. What's 
holding you up, Martin. Well, it's, it's too bad when a person wastes time until maybe there isn't any more time. Time for what? Hardly more than maybe goodbye. Or to say I'm sorry for all the mean things I've said without having sense enough to realize I'd regret them. You know, with any luck, I think we might have been friends. Maybe more than that. How does it look, Sergeant? Looks like they're right upset about something. Good luck. Same to you. Way to do that miracle I tried with that old musket last night. He's gone to get the medicine man. Burn!
finish, yes ma'am. Still a deserter. A man doesn't want to spend all of his life running. Where's he going? The defendant will step forward and face the court. The court has carefully weighed the evidence which has been presented by the prosecution and the defense. And it is the unanimous verdict of this court. Tension! At ease, gentlemen. Uh, don't let me interrupt, Colonel Shevington. You're in charge. 
Lieutenant Hewitt is charged with insubordination and desertion. Uh, where did you apprehend him? Well, he came back voluntarily, but with the wildest story ever dreamed by man, of having ridden to Texas, rallied a bunch of women, and fought off an Indian attack. That was no story. The defendant will remain silent. The general may be interested to know that Yellow Horse and Broken Foot were brought in three days ago. True, they admitted having been in a fight. One they'll never forget. And a fight with buffalo hunters, not some imaginary petticoat brigade. Out of my way, sonny. Up on your feet, every one of you. What's the meaning of this? We come to fetch the lieutenant. Well, stand easy, boys. This ain't no bugle I'm holding. Colonel, this is that phantom petticoat army you spoke about. I'd like to have you meet McCaslin, Ogden, Conover, Sergeant Lacey, Mullivan, Corporal Martin. Incidentally, six of the best marksmen you ever saw. Yeah. Well, now that we've been introduced, let's get out of here. Hold it, Lacey. Look, man, I appreciate what you're trying to do for me, but you're going to get me hung. You women clear out of here before I have you driven out. Mr. Colonel, if there's any driving to do, we'll do it. Melvin, what's come over you? The good Lord let me know that if something's worth fighting for, a body better fight. Sergeant Weber, have the bugler sound assembly. Maybe we have a truce. That depends. Just long enough to admit that the South has counterattacked in force and we've lost this engagement. <laughs> also, the numerous reports I've received prove that the wrong man has been on trial here. The evidence is overwhelming. And I might add, some of it downright attractive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant, your testimony will be required at the trial of Colonel Shivington in the matter of the Sand Creek Massacre. Colonel, return to your quarters. Stella wanted me to tell you that she took your advice and stayed behind to wait for her husband. Lieutenant, thank you. And God bless you. That was for the slap, Frank. I made a good trade, McCaslin. Thanks again. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you. You know, I don't think I'll ever get used to you without gun smoke on your face. You better try, Renegade. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you, Nancy. Ogden and I are going to raise Nancy to be a real lady. You think that'll kind of square things? I think that'll square a lot of things. Good luck. And good luck to you, too. we can get. Those drums are driving me crazy. Frank! Frank, they're sneaking up on us! Hold it! Hold it! That's no attack. They're coming to claim they're dead. Turn, Lacey. As soon as they moved away, send a detail and bury those three renegades. Right. I'm sorry. You did right. How are you holding up, McCaslin? Just tired. I, I know this may sound strange after the way I acted, but when you're liable to be sleeping for a long while, you try to crowd in as much living as you can in what time is left. You're a good soldier. We'll get some rest. Frank, I want you to know whatever happens, I've learned one thing out of it. Life is meant for only one thing. Every minute of it. To love and to be loved. That's all that counts. Stella, listen. Please. And if we live through this, 
I'm going to tell my husband that what never really started between him and me is never going to start. And then I'm going home to Joplin and wait. Jones, take over here. You've gone on guard at 3 o'clock. You better get some sleep. Stop treating me like a child. I treat you all the same. Except Stella Latham. That's crazy. No. You can fool a young boy like Bax. You can stoop to use a lie about me to fool Listen, him. Listen, if you don't want to be treated like a child, don't act like one. Scared, Anne? We all are, you know. It's not that. How does it look, Sergeant? Looks like they're right upset about something. Good luck. Same to you. Way to do that miracle I tried with that old musket last night. He's gone to get the medicine man. Burn! Took you ladies to make up your minds, gave the Comanches time to close off the valley. Two days ago, even yesterday, could have been different. We're asking about today and tomorrow. I say we stay here, all of us. How many of you ladies know how to shoot? You can put your hand up. I can shoot good, damn Yankee. Mr. Hewitt, only the good book tells me what is right to do. I don't believe in shooting and killing. Miss Cora, the Comanches won't be reading the good book through their rifle sights. Miss Hannah, I appoint you sergeant and second in command. Pick yourself a couple of corporals. I'll take Ann Martin and Stella Latham. Good. Now get those horses unhitched and put them in the corral. Get your belongings inside the mission. Well, now, I sure wish you troopers a lot of luck, because you're sure going to need it. 
Going somewhere, Kettle? Maybe you do need a man around here. At least when you're sure is on your side. At least I chose a side. All right, let's get to work. You heard the man. Oh, Ed, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, Mary. Yeah. All right, men, use your muscles. Turn it over. All right. Ready, men? One, two, three, heave! Any three men, Lieutenant? Any three men? Yeah, well, target practice. Good. Hold it, hold it. Get your head down so you can see that front sight. That's it. That's fine, Eddie. You all right? I don't think you'll ever hit it with that cannon, but to sure as blaze it scare him to death. If I remember correctly, you don't need much practice. I'll take my gun back if you don't mind. Guard that window! You make a great team, Hattie. Yes, I will. Sure do. I'll go get some more ammunition. Yes, ma'am.
All right, men, use your muscles. Turn it over. In there. Push. Push. All right, Lieutenant. All right. Ready, men? One, two, three, heave! Any three men, Lieutenant? Any three men? Yeah, well, target practice. Good. Hold it, hold it. Get your head down so you can see that front sight. That's it. That's fine, Eddie. You all right? I don't think you'll ever hit any of them with that cannon, but to sure as blaze it scare them to death. If I remember correctly, you don't need much practice. I'll take my gun back if you don't mind. Lieutenant, any three men. Most any three men. Hurry up, hurry up. Prepare to move out, Sergeant. Skirt! Hop! Tuck him in. Tuck him in. be doing a skirmish, not dancing a polka. Echoes, get down. You're just asking for a bullet in the back of your lap, and that's a hard place to tie a bandage. Do it again. And this time, I want you to hit that ground so hard it splits wide open. Oh. Say, General, this ain't the kind of work I'm accustomed to. You sure you can't think of some more pleasing arrangement for the both of us? Fall in! You got to brace your feet. Brace your feet, girls. Next. I wonder what it's like to have a kid of your own. Well, way to find out. Married and settle down. Me? <laughs> your country, your life. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I knew a shoemaker once who became a violinist. It's a good girl. Emmett! Emmett! Don't leave me! Don't She tried to stop him, but she couldn't. I'll take her. Oh, no. No. Help me, Cora. You lied for her. One question. Why did you keep the horse here? I might have been able to lead the Indians away before they spotted the place. They'd have caught you. Maybe. Oh. 
Anyone here? Amigo, set up three more. Well, come on, make it fast. These mornings are terribly dry. Look, I, I'm no bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are. And we lost the other one that way. Tortilla mist. Yeah, sometimes. Thank you. Hey. Amigo, how much money you got? None. I haven't got any. <laughs> You'll stay for dinner. Will you open the peaches? Maybe. Go back to the house. What? Go on, mind me. Hi, Stella. Thought you'd gone for good. So did I. But you couldn't stay away. No, Stella, I couldn't. In fact, I deserted to get here. Well, you're a little late. I'm married. Did you think you were the only man in the world? Now, wait a minute. Wait? Was I supposed to wait forever, Mr. Hewitt? Well, let me tell you, just one week after you left, I got married. To a good man, too. Ed Latham. That's his kid brother, Bax. Stella, you're making a mistake. Two weeks ago, there was a massacre of Cheyennes at Sand Creek. My regiment did it. Now the Indians are on their way. Indians? You've made that up fast. Get off my land. Stella, wait! Your best chance is at the mission. Damn Yankee! Get her there, Bax. Damn Yankee! Hello, Miss Hannah. Don't you recognize me, Miss Hannah? I'm Frank Hewitt. I don't recognize no traitors. Look, the Comanches are on their way here. I came to you because I figure you're the strongest woman of them all. If you think you can scare Southern women off of their land so you can take over and claim it for your own, you're stupid. I don't want anything except to help. You'd better listen to me, Miss Hannah. Listen? Young man, I've already listened to three husbands in my time, and maybe I'll listen to three more before I'm done. Now, you listen. Our men folk are all fighting your kind, and we don't want what you call your help, and I call your lies. You'd better get going before you need some patches on them blue britches. me if I love him. That's not a fit question. I guess I married him out of hurt and spite. I don't blame you for that. I went crazy wild at what you'd done. Forget it. Well, you say something you'll be sorry for later. I'm so glad I can say it at last. Frank, in my heart, I've never been wife to Ed. When I saw you come riding in, it was like a dam bursting inside me. Let all my feelings loose. Hey, Stella! Stella! What is it, Bax? Sergeant Hannah needs you. I'll be there in a minute. She wants you right away. I made that up to make her go. Now, mister. Be hey, careful where you're pointing that gun. I know where I'm pointing it. At a no-good Yankee. Trouble we're in, don't you think we ought to forget about the war, Bax? When my brother went away, he told me to look after his wife. I bet you've been doing a good job, too. We were just talking about it. Out here? Like that? Hey, Bax, can you keep a man's secret? Depends. You're a good brother, Bax, but you got things a little mixed up. 
You see, I already have a girl. Which one of them is she? You will find out. Which one? Well... There she is now. Bats, come back here. Hello. Hello, Bats. And Martin. That's right. She's nice. Yeah. Now, you remember, it's a secret. Sure. Now, it's time you got to bed. Good night. Put that gun away. Look, what makes him so sure them Indians are between us and safety, huh? And that it's too late to make a run. Dora Hartley was pretty good proof. All right, even if he was right, why aren't we better off trying to fight our way the 200 miles than sitting around here waiting to be slaughtered like a bunch of sheep? Well, that's something to think about. Look, we can make it easy if we travel light. Load everyone in a couple of wagons, hitch the extra horses on behind, then when the first teams give out, we change over. Simple? Lying, he has to shoot you. If you have no money, he has to. Now, what's it going to be? Look, um, suppose I, suppose I was to tell you where there was gold. Huh? Where's that? C cut me down. He said where? The, the old mission, twelve hours west of here. Oh boy, why would you tell us? Not keep it yourself? Well, I couldn't. I couldn't. Just... See, there's a bunch of women there, afraid of an Indian attack. They held me prisoner, but I escaped. And they got jewels and gold there. We mean? Supposing there is no gold. There is. They're still the women. And also Indians. <laughs> oh, what are you scared of? So long as we're locked up in this valley, we might as well enjoy it. Yes, unless Amigo lies and there is no women. I'm not lying, I'm not. Well, then we come back to him and complain. What is to keep Amigo here? I'll wait. I'll wait. Look, I, I want my share of the gold, too. That's fair enough. Huh? Are you sure? I'm sure you're not lying. No. About the gold? No. Or the women, huh? No, I... No. Well, then... I'm afraid I really must, old boy. Oh, no. Oh, no! Please! Well, after all, it's not good to have too many people know about a hoard of gold. Or women. <clears throat> oh. I hope his horse is good. Mine's a bit lame. ourselves some help. They're white men. Well, okay. <laughs>
Question. Why did you keep the horse here? I might have been able to lead the Indians away before they spotted the place. They'd have caught you. Maybe. more. Well, come on, make it fast. These mornings are terribly dry. Look, I, I'm no bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are. And yeah, we lost the other one that way. Tortilla mist. Yeah, sometimes. Thank you. Hey. Amigo, how much money you got? None. I haven't got any. <laughs> it's pretty low. What are you going to do? <laughs> Come over here. What are you gonna do to me? What? Leave me alone! Put your arms up! Shut up! Look, I've got nothing. All I want to do is get out of here. I can't. We find out. Leave me alone, will you? Yeah. Get him. Get him up. He's a heavy one. Leave me alone! Now. There. Now tell me, how much money you got? None, I, I told you, none. Oh, amigo, I must get them up. He's a heavy one. Oh, me, ah. no. <laughs> now, there. 
Now tell me, how much money you got? None, I, I told you, none. Oh, amigo, I must shoot you for lying. I'm not lying, I'm not. I... <laughs> oh, look, my pockets are empty, search. Sir, sir. Well, I have to shoot you for not having no money. <laughs> no. Look, look, will you tell your boys to stop this just joke and cut me down out of here? I wish I could, my friend. But we're in somewhat of a dilemma. If you're lying, he has to shoot you. If you have no money, he has to. Now, what's it going to be? Look, um, supposing I, supposing I was to tell you where there was gold. Huh? Where's that? Oh, c cut me down. He said where? The, the old mission, 12 hours west of here. Oh, boy, why would you tell us not keep it yourself? Well, I couldn't. I couldn't. You see, there's a bunch of women there afraid of an Indian attack. They held me prisoner, but I escaped. And they got jewels and gold there. We mean? Supposing there is no gold. There is. There's still the women. And also Indians. Oh, what are you scared of? So long as we're locked up in this valley, we might as well enjoy it. Yes, unless Amigo lies and there is no women. I'm not lying, I'm not. Well, then we come back to him and complain. What is to keep Amigo here? I'll wait, I'll wait. Look, I, I want my shirt to go, too. That's fair enough, huh? Are you sure? I'm sure you're not lying. No. About the gold? No. Or the women, hmm? No, I... no. Well, then, I'm afraid I really must, old boy. Oh, no. Oh, no! Please! Well, after all, it's not good to have too many people know about a hoard of gold. Or women. <clears throat> well, I hope his horse is good. Mine's a bit lame. Just exactly what are you? I guess you could say I'm a deserter. From which side? Both, I suppose. I'll get you that food and water. gone for good. So did I. But you couldn't stay away. No, Stella, I couldn't. In fact, I deserted to get here. Well, you're a little late. I'm married. Did you think you were the only man in the world? Now, wait a minute. Wait? Was I supposed to wait forever, Mr. Hewitt? Well, let me tell you, just one week after you left, I got married. To a good man, too. Ed Latham. That's his kid brother, Bax. Stella, you're making a mistake. Two weeks ago, there was a massacre of Cheyennes at Sand Creek. My regiment did it. Now the Indians are on their way. Indians? You made that up fast. Get off my land. Stella, wait! Your best chance is at the mission. Damn Yankee! Get her there, Bax. Damn Yankee!
Hello, Miss Hannah. Don't you recognize me, Miss Hannah? I'm Frank Hewitt. I don't recognize no traitors. Look, the Comanches are on their way here. I came to you because I figure you're the strongest woman of them all. If you think you can scare southern women off their land so you can take over and claim it for your own, you're stupid. I don't want anything except to help. You'd better listen to me, Miss Hannah. Listen? Young man, I've already listened to three husbands in my time, and maybe I'll listen to three more before I'm done. Now you listen. Our men folk are all fighting your kind, and we don't want what you call your help, and I call your lies. You'd better get going before you need some patches on them blue britches. We were talking to them right here. That's right, Chief. They couldn't have just flew away. Oh, he not watch that little capoe. Say, pala um nim, we see. Chief, I know it. Going away. We're safe. I knew if I prayed, there would be no killing. You didn't do those three any good. All right, let's get below. We sure fooled them, didn't we? Frank, what have I done? Could have happened to anyone, Max. Get to your post. Max, look after the children. Get over there. That's an order you will obey if I have to drag you over there. Waiting for the medicine man to tell them the signs are in their favor. Hold your fire, McCaslin. They're out of range. Just want us to get scared and use up ammunition. Mother of Moses, you can't get any scareder than I am right now. This is it. Let him come into the center of the yard before you shoot. And don't waste any bullets. Hand mark? That's right. She's nice. Yeah. Now you remember it's a secret. Sure. Now it's time you got to bed. Good night. Put that gun away. Look, what makes him so sure them Indians are between us and safety, huh? And that it's too late to make a run. Dora Hartley was pretty good proof. All right, even if he was right, why aren't we better off trying to fight our way the 200 miles than sitting around here waiting to be slaughtered like a bunch of sheep? Well, that's something to think about. Look, we can make it easy if we travel light. We load everyone in a couple of wagons. Hitch the extra horses on behind, then when the first teams give out, we change over. Simple?
Don't mind me. Hi, Stella. Thought you'd gone for good. So did I. But you couldn't stay away. No, Stella, I couldn't. In fact, I deserted to get here. Well, you're a little late. I'm married. Did you think you were the only man in the world? Now, wait a minute. Wait? Was I supposed to wait forever, Mr. Hewitt? Well, let me tell you, just one week after you left, I got married. To a good man, too. Ed Latham. That's his kid brother, Bax. Stella, you're making a mistake. Two weeks ago, there was a massacre of Cheyennes at Sand Creek. My regiment did it. Now the Indians are on their way. Indians? You've made that up fast. Get off my land. Stella, wait! Your best chance is at the mission. Damn Yankee! Get her there, Bax. Damn Yankee! Hello, Miss Hannah. Don't you recognize me, Miss Hannah? I'm Frank Hewitt. I don't recognize no traitors. Look, the Comanches are on their way here. I came to you because I figure you're the strongest woman of them all. If you think you can scare southern women off their land so you can take over and claim it for your own, you're stupid. I don't want anything except to help. You'd better listen to me, Miss Hannah. Listen? Young man, I've already listened to three husbands in my time, and maybe I'll listen to three more before I'm done. Now, you listen. Our men folk are all fighting your kind, and we don't want what you call your help, and I call your lies. You'd better get going before you need some patches on them blue britches. Get over there. That's an order. You will obey if I have to drag you over there. Waiting for the medicine man to tell them the signs are in their favor. <laughs> Hold your fire, McCaslin. They're out of range. Just want us to get scared and use up ammunition. Mother of Moses, you can't get any scareder than I am right now. This is it. Let him come into the center of the yard before you shoot. And don't waste any bullets. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jasmine. Jasmine. Get those outposts in. 